Has anybody been going through something? The year is almost over, right? This year went by so quick. But if you ask most of us, a lot of things we can remember is our situation, our trouble. And we're still going through it. Is, am I speaking to anybody this morning? If it wasn't one thing, it was the next. Trouble after trouble. And you're wondering what's going on here. This morning, we want to take a look at a man in the Bible who had issues and how he handled it. How you handle your issues. I want you to talk to yourself. How did I handle what is happening to me? Who did I blame? You blame Jesus? I'm, pretty, I'm playing. We all have something. And as I reflected on this mess uh, for about two weeks now, I started to remember the issues in my life. It's just one thing after the next, after the next. But how you handle them? Let's turn to the book of Job. A lot of us, when you ask somebody about, what do you know about the book of Job? The first thing they can tell you is he suffered with boils. That's the first thing that comes to their mind. That he suffered and he was in pain. A lot of you, that's where you're at right now. It may not be physical pain, but it could be emotional pain. You are frustrated. You've gotten blow after blow. The book of Job is interesting. Before we get into what happened to him and how it happened and why it happened and who let it happen, let's take a look at the man himself. Watch what type of man this was. The man, the Bible said, his name, there was a man whose name was Job. Then right after that, it said, this man was a blameless and upright. He feared God and he shunned evil. That's the type of man we're going to talk about this morning. Blameless, to be innocent of wrongdoing and without guilt. Upright, he walked straight, he did nothing crooked. Feared, Psalms 111.10 says, fearing the Lord will give you wisdom. Job, 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 Job. He shunned. He abstained from, from every evil, from every wrongdoing. He set himself apart from it. That's the man we're going to talk about today. Job was just not good. He was great. Job had everything. He had wealth. He had health. He had family. He had joy. He had peace. He had comfort. And in one day. Now remember, you've been going through some stuff. One day, as the angels would get ready to go talk to God, some wicked fellow by the name of Lucifer went too. And God said to him, Have you not looked upon my servant Job? God. God has given the devil a little permission to do something in Job's life. Too many times we just feel that things are happening to us and we're good people. But listen to the topic. Even on a bad day, God is still a good God. You may have your bad days. You may have things happening to you. But you got to look at the big picture. God allowed Satan to go do some stuff to Job, but he had restrictions, okay? Now, if God can allow things to happen to a righteous man, a blameless man, a man who shunned from evil, a man that they couldn't point his fingers at him, who are you and I? That when things happen in our lives, we get frustrated so easily. Well, you get one situation and you're ready to say, Lord, where are you? 
And we, not, not, I'm not pointing fingers, but I'm saying there are some Christians that live anyhow they want. And when something happens to them, they want, well, God, aren't you supposed to be on my side? This is Job. This is God's servant. Listen, the Bible tells us that our understanding is not like the Lord's. We don't know his plan. We don't know what he is doing. The man was rich and happy and had everything. John 16, 33 says, in this world, you will have troubles. A lot of Christians have this mentality that I am saved, I'm a Christian, and my life's supposed to be smooth sailing from now on. God will allow certain things in your life to happen. But here's the main picture we want to focus on in this book today, is faith and how you handle it. Every part of this situation that happened to Job, he never once turned away from God. Too many people today, we have a little situation that happened, and the first thing we do is run from God instead of running to God. You have one breakup. You run away. You have one falling out. You run away. You lose a job. You, you get distracted and you get frustrated. And instead of running to God, you run away from him. Job is losing everything. And this is only the first test. There's more to come to it. God don't just test you one time. He said, this is my son. Now listen, if, if, if God has given you a situation that is overwhelming to you, he has faith. God knew what he would give to Job. Job can handle it. So when God has given you something, he has faith in you that he knows you can handle it. And if God can have faith in you knowing you can handle something, you should have faith in God knowing he will deliver you from it. So whatever you're going through, now this may sound silly. Some of you may be going through way more problems than the others. And you now you're saying, Jason, you're telling me to thank God for it? It could always be worse. Your problem today is nothing compared to what somebody else is having. The man had everything. While God gave Satan approval to do these things to him, while Job was sitting there, <laughs> this is the part that, oh my gosh, when I read it and reread it, he was sitting there and there came some news. Job, such and such happened. You lost all your livestock. Job hadn't even had a chance to let that sink in. As the man was still bringing the bad news, here comes another one. Job, I know I can't let him finish, but I have some more bad news to add on top of that. And then while that guy was talking, another one came and said, hold on, you two, I got some more bad news. And then while he was talking, another one came. You think what you have is serious? Sometimes instead of crying about our problems, just laugh and rejoice and say, Lord, I know you got me. Lord, I thank you for this one situation that I have. All I have to deal with is a runaway child. Thank you, Lord. I know you can fix that. All I have to deal with is a little broken marriage right now. I know you can fix that. All I have right now, Lord, is a little financial problem. I know you can show up. All I knew, Lord, now is I need a job. Not like, oh my. Gosh, imagine this man. One thing after another and after another and after another. Like I asked you this morning, what happened to you this year? And 90% of us said we had something. We have an issue. But can you compare your issue to this? And with all this that he's going through, his faith was with him. He lost his money. He lost his love in children who he used to pray over and who he used to sacrifice animals and bless them. Now Job did all this and had all this and he never turned from God when he was wealthy. Watch that. He was wealthy and he was blameless, but he still feared God. A lot of people today, you get a little change in your pocket and now you are in charge. A lot of people today, they have their health and their wealth and their kids graduated the best schools, they're driving the best cars, and their life is great, and they live in the nicest house. 
and they forget about God. Not Job. He still committed his children under God. Because you know why? Just like that, you can lose it. You can lose anything in this world, but you cannot lose the love of God. You cannot lose the favor of God. You cannot lose your provider in heaven, your ultimate father, Jesus Christ. Material things can come and go, but God will always be with you. You may lose things, and it's not easy losing things. I get it. But just as because you lose it, God, the comforter, he is a comforter. He can replace what you lost. He can comfort you in that time when you're in that bed and you're crying and you don't know who to talk to. He is your comforter. You lost your house. What is a house for God? You got your first one because of him. You don't think he can do it again? You think he's a one miracle working God? You think he was only going to show up one time in your life? Only one blessing you get? Do you understand his love for you? And like, like the Bible says, sometimes when God puts something on you because he knows you can handle it. And the bigger the problem you're facing right now, take that as a compliment. And I know some of us are like, Lord, I'm overqualified for what you're giving me right now. Don't love me too much, God. As he goes, the man, after news, after news, after news, never blame God, but he got frustrated. That's okay. We are humans. It's okay. No one's telling you to just to smile through all your troubles. And act. He got frustrated. He ripped his robe off. He's human. We are human. And this is just the first part. Right? So Satan goes before God again. Not like this is not enough. You may think one thing is enough, and all right, they can't get any worse than this. What else are they going to do to me? They already took every material thing that I have. I don't have two nickels to rub together. I, I got nothing. Now watch his health. Satan said to God, the reason why he's still faithful to you is that was just material things. Strike him, touch his health, and see how, how he will turn from you. God, again, is allowing things to happen. God, again, is allowing negative things to happen. Satan cannot touch you unless God allows it. He said, if I strike him, watch him turn from you. And again, God said, go ahead. Because God knew. He knew the life of Job. He knew the relationship Job had with him. He knew his faith. What type of faith is that? That is a strong, what type of faith do we have? Can God trust us with a bigger situation in our lives? Or would he know where we will crumble and fail? And that's how you grow. It's from situation to situation. That's how you build your spiritual muscle. You don't go to the gym and lift a weight one time and get a muscle. Heavier the weight, the bigger the muscle, the stronger the man. Some of you are going to be real strong. But you're going to make it. So now this man, not only has he lost everything, physically, money, kids, he's just confused, crying, frustrated. And now he's covered in boils. The Bible said from the top of his head, to the sole of his feet, covered in a boil, in boils. If you ever, if you ever, some of us get a little pimple and we get, ow. You ever get one of those little pimples at the corner of your nose right here? And how painful that is? Covered in boils. And he still have not turned away from God. Faithfulness. He hasn't seen anything given back yet. All he has seen is things taken away one by one by one by one. And a lot of you are that way in that situation right now. For the past while, everything, well, I still have this and that's gone. Well, I still have this. Well, that's gone. Well, I have a savings. Well, that's gone. One after one after one, going and going and going. Now, his faith is still there. But the wife. We're going in. We're going in. You guys know the story. We're not skipping anything out. We're going. 
We're going in line. I'm not picking on ladies. I'm not picking on anybody. I don't have a wife, so I ain't going to get in trouble. So. Okay, how can I not get in trouble by saying this? Sometimes the closest people to you mean the best, but it doesn't always come out the best. He is not complaining, but here she comes and says, hey man, why don't you just give it up? You lost everything. Why don't you just curse God and die? Now, a lot of people, that might make sense. They lost everything. What else am I living for? But you see, that did not make sense to him. To him, that was foolishness because he knew who his God was. His faith was not shaken yet. He was not frustrated yet. He is not ready to give up when everything around him is gone. What kind of faith is that? You have no money. You have no house. You have no job. You have, I mean, everything is stripped from you, and yet you're holding on. That's where some of you are at right now. And I want to encourage you, brother and sister, hold on. Hold on, because the book of Job does not stop in the middle of the book. And things that are happening in your life doesn't just stop there. There's an end coming where you will see a God who shows up better than it was before for you. Now, after losing everything, I have to keep saying that to show you guys. After losing everything, then you have a situation in the household with, with you and the wife. Now comes the friends. Okay? Money gone. Cattle gone. Sheep gone. Dog, cat, goldfish, everything gone. Right? Children gone. Health gone. You have no strength. You can't help yourself. Isn't that bad when you can't even help yourself and more bad things are happening to you? You can't get out of one situation and another one's coming up. His friends who lived a little distance away heard about what's happening to him. And they came to support their brother. And when they saw him from afar, they could barely recognize him. And then they got sad. They ripped their robes. What is it with these guys back then? Clothes must not have been that expensive back then. Every time somebody got mad, they ripped their clothes. They saw him, and they started to weep with him. Watch this. For seven days and seven nights, they sat with him and said nothing. Sat with him and said nothing. And they just watched their brother in pain. And they were wondering, what's happening? Now, finally, when it's time for them to open their mouth to say something... They were not too supportive. Watch judgment. At the end of it, they were asking him now. They were thinking, you must have done something wrong. What sin is there in your life that this is happening to you? Sometimes it's best to stay quiet when you don't know what is happening to a brother and a sister. They sat with him quiet until they got fed up. And they were, there has to be something he's doing wrong. There has to be some type of sin in their life. You know how many times I bet you some uh, people go to visit a, a member in church in the hospital. And they sit by the bedside and they don't say nothing. And the minute they walk out the hallway, there has to be something wrong in his life for him to be in the bed like that. He must be living. He needs to turn away from his sins before God can heal him. They sat with him, and finally they had to say something. And what they said wasn't encouraging. And at the end, even Job had to say, guys, one of the translations, he told him to shut up. He said, shut up. You don't even know. If you don't don't know what's happening, why are you commenting on something you don't even know about? Why do we assume certain things in people's lives that we don't even know about? The man is just sitting there in his pain and his agony, and you are making up assumptions. Why is he going to, why he's doing that? When the Bible tells us he is blameless. Now you're looking for faults. 
With all that, again, I'm going to go back and say, his faith was never moved. He was frustrated with the friends. He was frustrated with what happened to him. He was frustrated with the situations of the season. He was frustrated with his sickness, but he was never frustrated and say, why, God? He, at one point, he even cursed the day he was born. He said, why? He just, when you read that chapter, when what Job prayer was, you, you, you feel sad. To see this agony this man is going through. The words he is using to show you the pain, the mental pain, the physical pain. For a blameless man, sometimes we wonder, God, why are you allowing certain things to happen? And God says, hold on, you don't know. You don't know the bigger picture. You don't know the plans. Sometimes the things that are hurting us right now, we want to say, Lord, why did you choose me for this? Look at everybody else. And a lot of people relate sickness and bad times and one after one to sin. Well, you must be doing something wrong. They, they, they look at it like that. But this man, the Bible tells us, he was blameless. Jesus spoke with Satan in the first few books of the Bible. Now you're all the way to chapter 38. You haven't heard God in any other chapter up until now. Sometimes you wonder where God is. All you, all you, he was there in the beginning, but all through it, where are you, Jesus? Where are you, Jesus, when I'm going through this sickness? Where are you, Jesus, when I lost my child? Lord, where are you when everything has been taken away and you're silent? Job's faith was still there. God had a conversation with Job. Whenever you get a chance, this, this, I can't say it word for word, but it, read it back. So you will understand a little clearer. Of the, I'm just highlighting one or two things and what I thought that the congregation should hear. Because most of the times all we hear is sickness and Job and sickness and Job. We forget about the man's faithfulness and we forget how holy he was. And if it could happen to Job, why can't things happen? Well, why, what, who, who are we? After all that. It came an end. Your suffering, your loss, your sadness has to come to an end. I don't know when the end will be for you. Only God knows that. But be encouraged that everything that's happening to you now is because God is allowing it and he has an end date for it for you. Everybody has a different end date in their suffering and in their trouble. If you keep your faith while you're waiting on that, it'll be a lot easier. Because I get it with this, I get it with Job. I mean, who, he has nobody to turn to. And some of you are in that situation right now. You don't even have a family member or a friend or anybody to turn to. But you know what the Bible says? He's a friend that stick it closer than a brother. The Bible has an answer even for when you're in your sorrows. The Bible has an answer for when even you're lost. Open up the Bible. Open up your heart. Because the Bible tells us Job's suffering came to an end. The Bible tells us that God blessed Job with more than he had when he went into his situation. The Bible told us that he extended Job's life a lot longer. The Bible tells us he got three times more wealth than what he had before. Guys, you have been through it. Maybe you're in the middle of it right now, but you're going to come out of it. You're not going to be stuck there the whole time. But what you need to be stuck on is your faith with God. You need to be stuck on holding on to his promises. You need to remember that things are happening in your life only because God is allowing it. And ultimately, God is in control. We do not know his ways. His ways are greater than ours. It's not for us to understand. It's for us to trust and keep the faith. And I'm closing with this. You have made it. You've been through the losses. You've been through the trenches. You have suffered enough. You have passed the test. And God is saying to somebody today, I am going to double for your trouble. 
You had troubles. You had suffering. Now it's time for God to add life back to you. Now God is going to add some finance back to you. Now God is going to restore some health back to you. Now God is going to put back joy, more joy than you ever had before. Now God is going to give you strength that you didn't have back in the day. You're going to get a peace of mind now that you never had before. You are going to be encouraged to see, I've been through it. God trusted me and my faith pulled me through. Encourage yourself. Say, I made it through. I did not give up. Even though I saw losses, even though I went through the fire, even though I was in the hospital, even though I lost everything, I kept my faith. And my God is going to say, hey, hey, let me reward you with something better. Amen. Get ready for that. Amen. Pastor Mickey, Pastor Amar, is any one of the ministers want to come and pray and close us off, please? Glory, glory. God bless you. I hope this message ministered to you. Go back and read it. Amen.